everyone my name is Cynthia let's talk books today I want to share a bunch of books that I've been buying this has been over the course of the last four or five months um, I haven't been buying a ton of books lately um, but I have purchased some large parts of the, <laughs> this haul are romance so I'm gonna save or try to save those towards the end and focus on the uh, non-fiction and more general fiction that I've been purchasing because I do want to share them with you all. So let's get started. I'm like, I have several piles here. It's actually not that many books, but piles nonetheless. The first book I want to share is a non-fiction history book, Slavery Vault on Screen, The Haitian Revolution in Film and Video Games by Alyssa Goldstein Steppenwall. I've gone to several talks in which uh, the author explains a lot of the um, arguments she makes on here and her analysis of uh, video games and film that deal with the Haitian Revolution. I've absolutely loved all of her talks and can't wait to dig into this particular book. For Christmas, my significant other gave me a writer's workbook by Carolyn Sharp. Um, I'm kind of interested in um, getting back into writing. I haven't written in a really long time, at least not more long-term kind of writing, um, but uh, I'm hoping uh, that this will help me get back into it. I also bought The Anti-Abortion Campaign in England from 1966 to 1989 by Olivia, Olivia D. Um, this is my main area of research and this book I've been wanting for a while. I was just keeping track of it on Amazon and waiting until the price went down so I could nab it and it finally did. So I went ahead and got that. Um, I think it's that, no, one more nonfiction here. Uh, Black Love Matters, real talk on romance being seen and happily ever afters, edited by Jessica P. Pride. There's a lot of really great authors with uh, essays in this collection and I really really want to get to it. Um, Kasen over at Always Doing I uh, did a review of it and it's just I, I really want to read it. So I'm so glad that I was able to purchase that. I think this one is non-fiction as well. I think this is an autobiography. I'm not going to say the title of it but it's an autobiography by Dick Gregory with Robert Lips lip site. Um, a student uh, recommended it because uh, they were thinking about using it for a project they're doing in my class um, and I haven't read it so uh, as soon as she mentioned it I knew I had to pick it up and give it a go. So that is going to be on my TBR and I think, no, this is another another nonfiction. Okay, last one on here uh, is Half Breed by Mar Maria Campbell. And I believe this is a Native American autobiography. And yes, and a Canadian classic. I saw Jen, I remember Reads talk about this book and it just, I knew I had to read it. I think this was one of the um, early Native American autobiographies to be published. And, um, and so I, I, as soon as I heard her talk about it, I knew that I had to have it um, and get to it. Okay, now I think those are all <laughs> nonfiction and I can move on to some kind of uh, non-romance fiction here. Uh, the first on my list is Mugres Rosa by Fernanda Trias. This was recommended by a fellow historian because I talked about Severance, which I read in January um, and I talked about on here on my January wrap up. So this is a post-apocalyptic uh, novel written in Spanish and it sounds good. Um, and I can't wait to get into it. That's really all I know and all I needed to know because it came from somebody whose recommendations I really value and so I think I'm gonna like it. Next on my list is a cozy mystery. This is Body and Soul Food by Abby Collette. Uh, this is a new series. What is it called? A Book and Biscuits Mystery. So this is the first in a new series and I really liked Abby Collette's other book, uh, A Scoop of a Scoop of something. I forgot <laughs> but it's another cozy mystery um, that just sounded good. So uh, I can't wait to dig into this. I also bought uh, Père Goriot by Honoré de Balzac. Uh, I watched uh, Brian's um, 
video on where to get started with Balzac um, and I haven't read this one and this is one of the books that he talked about um, in there so um, I'm really looking forward to digging into this eventually. I also purchased Goliath by Tochi Onyebuchi. I was just browsing the bookstore when I came across this and Onyebuchi is an author that I've been interested in but I haven't read any of his work so uh, this is set in the 2050s and it just says earth has begun to empty those with the means and the privilege have departed the great cities of the United States for the more comfortable confines of space colonies and that is all I needed to read to be hooked and to know that I wanted to read this so I'm so glad I purchased this and then um, at the bookstore, I had gone in to pick up this book. It is Light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. So this book, Shannon at That So Poe did a review of this book and it just sounded perfect. It is a sci-fi book set in California and I, mm, like reading the premise, I just knew I had to have it. So I went into a bookstore in San Diego specifically because they had signed copies of it and it just the premise sounded so good and I knew I was gonna like it if Shannon liked it I just know that I'm gonna like it um, so I figured it was uh, worth it to buy a copy of it and to buy a signed one so I can't wait to dig into that one actually hopefully I'll be getting into it um, real soon and I think the rest of what I have here is romance. Uh, so the first here is Car um, Destiny Kills by Carrie Arthur. So this looks like a fantasy. And uh, oh, and now that I'm taking a quick look at the back, it looks like it's more of a romantic thriller. <laughs> so I am game for that. And next is a Beverly Jenkins. And I had to make sure that I didn't have this before I ordered the bundle because I have several of Beverly Jenkins's books. But this one I didn't have, and I just love Beverly Jenkins's historicals. She does such a wonderful job with them. Um, so um, I went ahead and um, got the bundle, uh, and I'm so glad that I didn't already own that one. This is The Devil of Clan Sinclair by Karen Ranney. Um, I used to read a lot of Scottish romances. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I, I, this is uh, up my alley, uh, as one would say. This looks like it's a contemporary romance. The Inn at Eagle Point, a Chesapeake Shores novel by Cheryl Woods. And now a Hallmark Channel original series. Um, these are not always my cup of tea, but this is one of the risks you take when you order books in a bundle, uh, that there might be one or two in there that are not exactly fitting within your comfort zone. This is not necessarily out of my comfort zone. It's just not a book that I necessarily would have picked up on its own, but um, I'm glad, I am glad I have it. Next here is Playing With Fire by Deborah Fletcher Mello. This is a sultry Southern Nights. Uh, lately I've been more into uh, contemporary romances, so we'll see how I do with this one. Then we have Forbidden by Jacqueline Frank. Whoops. This is the World of Nightwalker series. Um, yeah, I'm really into fantasy romance, so glad to have that one. Then The Wicked Wallflower by Maya Rodell. Great new read, low price. Okay, I'm like, I love wallflowers. Wallflowers was the name for women who um, stood in the back and didn't get asked to dance a lot. But they are often such interesting characters and I love a good wallflower romance. This was not in a bundle. This just got mixed in with the bundle books. But uh, the Ice Planet Barbarians series is getting re-released by Berkeley Romance with all new covers. Um, so this is a very special edition of it. I've read this for this. This is the first one, Ice Planet Barbarians. It came with some stickers and a bookmark. And I believe this one is signed. Yep, it's signed. So I had to get it just because this has been such a monumental book in the history world. Sorry, in the romance world. So, uh, so this is not, I've already read this one um, and this is more of a collector's item. 
Okay, let's see. A few more in here. This is an Alyssa Cole book I don't own and I didn't know about, but this is Radio Silence. I love Alyssa Cole's writing and it looks like this is not one of her historicals, but I just love her, her writing. So uh, when I saw that it came in the bundle, I was like, yes, please. This one is Sex and the Single Vamp, a vampire romance. I love a good vampire romance. This one's by Robin Covington. And let's see what's the tagline is, love, sex, eternity, dating never gets easier. I'm a sucker for a good vampire romance. Uh, this one is When Joss Met Matt by Ellie Cahill. So again, this is a contemporary romance and not one that I would have necessarily picked up on my own, but I will get to it eventually. And then we have Cherished by Maya Banks and Lauren Dane. Yeah, oh, so it's a co-author. Two only novellas that cross the boundaries of desire. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> And then Annalini Singh. So I've read a couple of Nalini Singhs and I, I, I really like uh, their writing. This is um, Rock Addiction, a Rock Kiss novel. So I'm guessing this is a rock star uh, no, um, novel. The rock star romances are not some that I gravitate towards, but because it's written by Nalini Singh, I will definitely give it a shot. And then <laughs> another Beverly Jenkins. Oh, and I also made sure that uh, I didn't already own this one, but this is Wild Rain, and this is part of the Women Who Dare series, and I actually have the other two books in this series, so this one basically completed my ownership of this series, so I was all for it. Uh, this one is set in Wyoming, and like I said, I just really like Beverly Jenkins' um, historicals. This one is... All the Best Nights by Hannah Ernest and again this is probably one of those like kind of rock star musical contemporary romances um, and I'm willing to give it a shot. Next is Scoundrel of My Heart and Once Upon a Dukedom uh, romance by Lorraine Heath. Um, sure, historical romances that in Regency England are pretty much my cup of tea. This one comes with a lot of high praise. I've seen a lot of really good reviews of this one. It is Careless Whispers by Cynthia Williams. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, and not just because I share a name with the author, although clearly she spells her name wrong. <laughs> I spell my name with a C. Uh, but but that's, that's a little extra fun to, to have an author with the same name. Uh, next is The Mysterious Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. I've also heard good things about this book, another Regency uh, romance. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that I end up liking it. I don't think I've read any Tessa Bailey, so this will be my first one. It happened one summer. And um, again, Tessa Bailey is uh, well known within the romance world and really well liked. So I'm hoping that it will work for me. And then last but certainly not least is Hannah Can Khan Carries On by Uzma Jalaluddin. I read Aisha at last, which was, um, I believe, her, her first novel. And I, I really enjoyed it. And I know Jenna, remember, reads didn't particularly enjoy this one. But in her description of this book, it sounded so up my alley. And then on top of it, it sounded really good. <laughs> Um, Jala Luden uses, like, kind of, will retell a story, but it's set in Canada with mus Muslim main characters. And so I'm really interested to see what she did, um, here. So that is it. <laughs> Those are the books I've been buying. Clearly lots of romance. And I think it's because it's, it's my comfort read. Romance is, is my comfort zone. And, um, and why not indulge in a little bit of, of that? So... Those are all the books uh, in my haul. If you've read any of them, please let me know. If you'd like to buddy read any of these with me, also let me know. Um, I don't have a ton of buddy reads planned for the year, so I'm always happy to, uh, to buddy read any of these with anyone if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.